Hello there and welcome to my cha 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 channel. What do we got here today? We got non-dairy from H-E-B. This is a grocery store here in Texas. I'm reviewing. It's rich, dark chocolate. So, and it's made with coconut milk. If you're new to my channel, I know unboxing and food reviews normally 99% of the time in the car. I also have a Patreon account now, and I'm also going to leave a link below the video on where to get this. This goes right here on the steering wheel, and you can step, 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 set stuff on it and eat. It's really, it's, it's worth the money. It's not that, it's not expensive, and I'll try to leave, like, the best price, like, I'll find it online, so, yeah. And I also have a Patreon now, so you can finally support this channel, and there'll be a link below the video to that. Also, when it comes to vegan ice cream, I reviewed a lot already. And I've also reviewed almost every single flavor of Nada Moo, which is also made with coconut. Amazing company, by the way. Absolutely amazing. And I scraped this because I don't want to waste. So, if you're new to my channel, I do unboxings. I've already said that. And uh, let's just get right on it. I might have story time on this if I don't run out of memory. That reminds me of a certain ice cream I've had in the past. It reminds me of Bluebell chocolate, which is also a Czech Texas ice cream, but it's not vegan. I wonder why Bluebell hasn't made vegan ice cream yet. Yeah, it does. It smells like blue the Bluebell chocolate. Well, that's not too sweet. Just like the Nanamu. What I like about Nanamu is you don't taste coconut milk. Well, there's a few flavors that you do when I reviewed it. I wonder if this is a Nanamu. No, it's not the Nanamu that I don't think it is because I kind of remember the ingredients of Nanamu. This is really, really good. Um, they also had Dutch. This is dark chocolate. I love H-E-B in some ways, but normally, and if you're watching this and you love H-E-B, I'm sorry. I normally was not crazy about back in the day when I had H-E-B ice cream was a long time ago. I didn't ever like their ice cream. I'm buying this more often. Oh, you know what this reminds me of? The So Delicious, the chocolate truffle. It reminds me of that, but that was made with cashew milk. And this is made with coconut milk. I'm trying to think what was better though, this. Of the, have you ever had the So Delicious? I know what I'm talking about. It was really good vegan ice cream. It was so delicious. And I forgot the name. It was, all I know it was, it was, it was a truffle. It had the word truffle in it. And it was decadent truffle or whatever. But it was so delicious. It's made with cashew milk. And, um. This tastes really, really similar to that. Really similar. It's a little bit dry. Like a lot of vegan ice cream, once it melts and dissipates, it doesn't leave that creamy, milky on your palate, which is fine. I'm really impressed with this. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't, I didn't have high hopes for this. I was like, H-E-B, vegan ice cream, it's not going to taste good. Now I want to go back and try them all. I'm really, really, really impressed and amazed by this H-E-B. Maybe that's why it took so long to come out with vegan ice cream because maybe you're doing like extensive research. If that's what you did, you can keep doing that when you come out with products. This is brand new. Vegan ice cream's been on the market for a long time. A lot of stores for a while now has had their own vegan ice cream. 
is coconut milk, and that is filtered water coconut milk powder, tapioca doctrine, I don't know, gum, sugar. See, the sugar is after. That's good. And it looks like there's no corn syrup in here. So it's coconut milk, which is coconut powder and water, I guess, to reactivate or whatever. Tapioca doctrine, something gum, then finally sugar, then dextrose, then cocoa, coconut oil, that's toward the bottom, cane sugar, glucose fiber, kosher salt, natural flavor, sunflower lithocin, carob gum, and garb gum. I'm going back and I'm getting more. I think I'm going to get all the flavors. What makes me mad too is... Well, that made me mad, but they had a special. It's like buy two for, I think it was five dollars, but I didn't buy two because I'm like, I don't think it's gonna be good. Boy, was I wrong. Mmm, this would be so good in a chocolate milkshake. Speaking of which, I'm gonna make. When I go in the house, I'm probably gonna make a milkshake. I just reviewed this product. You gotta check the review out for this. You have to. Like, you, uh, uh, yeah. Mmm. It's really, really rich and decadent. Like, if you don't like dark chocolate, you're not going to like this. I'm blown away. I want to give this a 10, but what if I try something better? Um, I've had other vegan chocolate ice creams that, some were bad, but some were just, like, amazing. I really have no complaints about this. It's amazing. But I'm never going to get it at a 10, though. I kind of want to, you know? I'll just say this. If I don't give it a 10, it's extremely close. Like 9 or above. It's a not, It's like a 9 or more. And will I get it again? Uh, yeah. Will I, am I, am I going to go to the store as soon as possible and get the other flavors? Yeah. Including the Dutch one? Yeah. Am I going to review them on this channel? Yeah. Okay. Oh, if you don't live in Texas, you're missing out. I feel bad. Now I feel bad because this is just absolutely... I am blown away. I don't taste coconut milk. It's creamy. Seriously, I'm. this is like literally one of the best vegan ice creams I've ever had. And I'm really shocked. And very, very, very happy. It should be, I can see why you didn't come out with the vegan ice cream for a long time. It seems like you're probably doing your research. Should I, it's eight minutes in, should I talk about, yeah, I think I will. I just hope it doesn't run out. So, story time. Or should I? Yeah, I'll just do it. So, I had a friend, his name was Mike, and he lived in low-income housing. And he was, he was ghetto. He didn't have a car. Um, I thought he was cute. I think, I think he looked like that country singer. Oh, I forgot the name of it. Uh, anyway, he looked, he liked, he looked like a country singer. I think he did. Everyone thought I was like, he does not look like a country singer to me. He's, and I think they were looking at his personality because I thought his personality was like really, really like bad. I think anyone would agree, but looks wise, I thought he was really cute. Garth Brooks. And I don't like country music. But that's what he looked like, Garth Brooks. I, thought, oh, I always thought Garth Brooks were cute. So anyway. So I lived in low-income housing. And at the time, I had a red sports car. It was an old red sports car. It was the Eagle Talon. Like 1994 Eagle Talon. This was a long time ago, right? And um, I never bragged to him or anything. But he would always ask me. He was like, because my car was getting old. And he would always ask me. He's like, well, if you would ever want to get like a new car, like what would, what would the car be? And, um, I was like, well, I like the Hyundai Tiburon because the price is cheap. It's a sports car. It looks sporty, but it's the cheapest car at the time that has that sporty look, but a cheap price. And I kid you not, this guy's living in low-income housing. He's on an SSI check. I think he only made like six or seven hundred a month. Like really, he wasn't on SSDI. He was on SSI. There's a difference. So he never worked a day in his life. 
so he never paid into the system. So, you know, it was like he was he was living way under a thousand. I would say between four fifty, five hundred and maybe six hundred at the most. So anyway, I'm getting to the story now. So he would always tell me, he's like, one of these days I'm gonna find a stupid the B word that you call women if you're disrespectful. Um, I'm gonna find a stupid B and uh, she's gonna buy it for me. And I'm like, what? I was like, Mike, I don't think you're ever gonna find a woman that's just gonna buy you a Hyundai Tiburon. And I was like, what do you have to offer her? You know, um, because according to everyone else, he was ugly. But everyone, including myself, agreed he had a horrible attitude. Like, he treated people like crap. I mean, in my opinion, he looked like Garth Brooks. I thought he was cute. But he was a, he was a mean, he was mean. He was really mean, you know. Um, he didn't have a car. His feet stunk, like, really, really bad when he took his shoes off. He had athlete's feet. And he was filthy, dirty. His low-income housing place, I mean, just because you live in low-income housing doesn't mean you have to be dirty. And so I'm thinking, what does he have to offer someone? Because the only thing I can tell that he has to offer someone is his looks, which I think he's cute. And everyone else said, he don't even have that, Jimmy. He don't have nothing to offer no woman. So he finally met a girl and got her pregnant. This girl was friends with my friend. So I knew this girl named Stacy. I'm going to tell you, I could, oh, I could tell you some stuff. Uh, that That's a whole other that's a whole other thing. So, this is really holding up. It's not freezing. So, I had friends with Stacy, and then her friend, we kind of introduced Mike to her. So, one thing left to the other, and um, she got pregnant. So, um, and he was mad. Um, and so, he didn't have anything to do with her. And he treated her really, really bad, especially after he found out that she was pregnant. Like, I mean, really bad. So they went to play a joke on Mike. So what they did was they got online and they pretended to be a girl. Um, and like, I don't remember. I'm trying to think. Let me pause it because I don't remember exactly how it happened. I'm sorry. My memory's bad. None of these stories are made up. So please don't say they are because I, I got too many stories to make anything up, but I'm getting old. Okay. So this is what they did. They messaged this girl on this chat app, like a dating thing, whatever. And she lived an hour away, um, which at the time, because I've moved already. But at, the, at that time, in that town, Mike and myself was an hour away from Austin, Texas. So she, she talked to this girl. And I ain't making fun of anyone, but she was, she was heavy set. Um, you know, I had to stereotype, but typical... And it's sad, but, you know, overweight female that, I guess, cannot find a man or whatever, has a low self-esteem, which I think is sad, but, and I found out through the grapevine, because they explained it to me how, and so, anyway, now I got that out of the way, um, so they, 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 they spoke to her, and they pretended to be Mike, and they're like, and they, they started to, like, compliment her, like, oh, you're sexy, you're so beautiful, whatever, whatever, and she's like, I'm just a fat ugly, whatever, whatever, you know, she's very low self-esteem. They told me all this, right? And they're like, um, so anyway, Mike didn't even know anything about it. So they're telling this girl that they're Mike and they're saying, oh, I love you. I think I'm falling in love with you. You're not fat. You're beautiful. Big is beautiful. On and on and on and on and on. And then said, I want you to come and visit me. And, th and the reason why they did this was to get back at Mike because he treated her like crap after, well, he treats everyone like crap, but after he got her pregnant, um, he, he, he was just mean. He was always mean. So, um, the girl comes in the middle of the night and they're outside his, uh, his apartment, his low income housing place, watching it. They watch the whole thing. She knocks on the door and Mike's not expecting anyone. So he's like, who are you? Whatever. And then I, I would assume because they didn't see, they were in the parking lot in the car. They said they watched it. And so she knocks on the door and they're conversing. And I would imagine she's like, hey, you know, I'm coming to see you. And he was like, who are you? I chatted with you online. He's like, I didn't chat with anyone. He lets her in the house and she doesn't come out. There's no commotion or nothing. Because um, they said that they actually went, you know, like got out of the car after she went in the house after a couple of minutes. They went like to listen. And so... She spends the night there. 
like she never goes home. And I kid you not, I kid you not, they call me the next day and they're like, you would not believe what happened. I said, what? And they tell me the whole story. And I'm like, what did you do to Mike? I was like, wow, you know, whatever. And they're like, yeah, they left. And then Mike called us up and said that he got her to buy him a brand new, brand new Hyundai Tiburon. And I'm like, what? I was like, so wait a minute. I was like, you're talking to this girl pertaining to be Mike. She drives an hour to see him. I guess with some booty or something. I don't know. Or maybe just to meet him. I don't know. She's probably falling in love. In love with him with all the nice stuff that they said to her. That's pretending to be him. I was like, and she only spent one night there. And the very next day, the very next day, um, she buys him a Hyundai Tiburon sports car. I was like, get out of here. And they're like, Jimmy. And I was like, how do you know? Obviously, he told them. He's like, guess what? This girl came over last night. I guess I was chatting with her. I don't remember or whatever. And she just bought me a sports car. Because he was always jealous of me because I had a sports car. Even though I'm not a bragging type person, I didn't need to be. He was jealous. And he always said to me, he was like, well, if you could get any sports car you'd want. I was like, because my car was falling apart. It was old. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he was just like, well, one day I'm going to get that. And I'm like, how? Like, you, you make it like $600 a month on a social security check. Like, a how, you know? And uh, I couldn't believe it. Like, I part of me believed him. I was like, they're, they're pulling my leg. He pulls up to my parents' house. And he knocks on the door. Or was it she? I think she knocked on the door. I don't remember. She was in the car, though. Maybe she knocked. No, I think he knocked on the door. And... Yeah, he knocked on the door. I was like, hey, Mike, what's up? And I'm looking. I'm like, there's a Hyundai Tiburon. That's true. And I'm thinking, you know, they're probably just like test driving it and she might buy it for him. That's what I thought. Because Mike's like, guess what I got? I got a brand new Hyundai Tiburon. The thing is the law of attraction. Like he said it. He put that out there. He's like, one of these days, I'm going to get a stupid BIT, you know, when you downgrade a woman. And uh, she's going to buy me a Hyundai Tiburon. I'm like, yeah, right. You know, like, r why would someone do that for you? You, you, you have nothing to offer someone. You're poor, you're broke, you're mean. I think you're kind of cute, but that's about it, looks wise. Your feet stink. <laughs> and so, I couldn't believe it. Like, And she was not too friendly with me at all. She was like, the B word, seriously. But uh, he's like, come look at it and stuff. And then she's sitting in the passenger. He's like, hey, how you doing? She's like, mm, hi, whatever. She was not you know, too friendly. Um, maybe he had said to her that I liked him and maybe she was like, that's my man now, whatever. Because looks wise, I thought he was cute. I guess I thought he looked like Garth Brooks and I don't even like country music. I really still as they think he looked like Garth Brooks. Um, with stinky feet and a bad, stinky feet and a bad attitude <laughs> and treats people horribly. Um, yeah. And, and she was just like, yeah, I bought it for him. I was like, no, I was like, you're maybe going to buy it for him. I was like, don't buy it for him. And that's what I spoke up. I was like, don't buy it for him. I said, like, he's going to use you. He doesn't love you. And then um, I told her what had happened. I was like, you know what? My friend um, that that you got pregnant did this joke on you. I was like, that's not even Mike that, that spoke to you. That That's the girl that he got pregnant. And he, he you, you'll see how he treats you. She didn't believe me. Then she really got ugly with me. I mean, really ugly. And uh, I don't know. I mean, she might even call me the F word, which is a gay slur. I don't know. Um, and so I was like, well, I was like, it's just a better time before Mike treats you really bad. You haven't seen his bad side yet. And I was like, and I still can't believe you bought it for him. She's like, no, it, I bought it. Well, she didn't pay cash for it. I found out that she was making payments on it. And she was a freelance photographer. And her parents had, like, a lot of money. Like, she came from a wealthy family. Her daddy um, supported her in Austin. I mean, how much she could make on freelance photography? And she was young. She was a pretty big girl, too. And you could just tell, you know, she was one of those girls that's big, that has a low self-esteem. And, you know, for someone to just take advantage of her, you know? And, um... And, and they, they, they obviously had sex that night, you know? Um, and so he like, he went from being semi my friend. Cause the thing is, 
I used to give him rides all the time. He didn't have no car. I used to come, he'd call me up and be like, come pick me up, take me to Walmart, take me to the grocery store. And I was like, well, I don't have a boyfriend and he's kind of cute, even though he treats me bad and treats everyone bad. He was, we were never together though. Um, and now he has a car, so he's not, he's not calling me up or anything, right? And so it's just crazy that the law of attraction, like he knew it, that he, that's what happened. He will get a woman to buy him a Hyundai Tiburon. That's just that. And it's going to happen without any doubt. And then look what happened. You see what I'm saying? Um, and so, but it backfired on him. So come to find out, this ice cream still hasn't melted. That's amazing. Um, and so some time passed. They were still together. And eventually he moved in with her in Austin. And he got out of the low-income housing. Well, it takes a lot to get to low-income housing. And once you're out, it's not easy to get back in. So I kind of knew. Something told me, he's like, you know, because if you're a bad person, it's going to eventually catch up to you. So he moves to Austin, doesn't work. Come to find out that I heard from the girl that he got pregnant and my friend that he promised her that he would, because she was paying payments on that car, was he was treating her more and more poorly and there was one time or a couple times that I saw them together. I think we hung out or something and like he would, I went to his place actually. I think while he was still moving, like he was already treating her bad, like already. So he moved to Austin in with her to shack up. She's still paying on the, the payments on the car and he's refusing to work. He's refusing to help out. He doesn't cook. He doesn't clean. He doesn't do anything. Like I said, you got to bring something into the relationship. You know what I'm saying? So, um, come to find out she got upset and she let the car go back get repossessed. Supposedly he either beat her up or abused her. He did something to, her. I don't remember what. Um, and during that time, um, he was trying to get back into his low income housing place. Well, it was too late cause he had already moved out. Right. So he moved back in with his mom. Well, while he was living in low-income low housing from the past, he had sex with a minor, a girl that's like underage. And when he was trying to get the, um, the low-income housing again, I guess they found out or something. Anyway, I found out through the grapevine that he actually went to prison, prison or jail. He got locked up, okay, because he did have sex with a minor. And supposedly my friend said that he said that she promised that she was over the age of 18 or whatever the age of consent is. I don't know. I personally think the age of consent needs to be 18 or maybe 21. Like if you're like, you have to be 21 to drink, but you can have sex. Like I, that's just my opinion. Like I think the drinking age and the age of consent should be the same. I think it should be at least 18, preferably 20. A male fashion. But yeah, so he got locked up. So, you know, he lost the car. He lost his low-income housing um, because, he, you know, he could have he could have never had to move into low-income housing. He could have lived with her, you know, if he just would have treated her right. Of course, that sex with a minor charge would have still popped up. But the reason why I'm saying this is because it's just, it's a sad story in a lot of ways. Not for him, but for her. Because he got what he deserved is the way I look at it. But, um... Because it's like the law of attraction. Because there's a lot of stories that I'm going to share on this channel. Well, I've witnessed the law of attraction. Or I've used the law of attraction. And I've witnessed it in others or myself or whatever. And it's just... <clears throat> just it's just, It still shocks me to this day that someone that cannot offer you nothing. That is not even making $1,000 a month. What woman wants to be with a man that don't even have a car? They can't even afford a car, okay? Dirty, filthy, no furniture. He, the only furniture he had, I kid, this is no joke. This is, I'm not making this up. The only furniture he had in that low-income housing place was a recliner that he got from the dumpster. Like, because he lived there and the dumpster was like right there. It was like, there was like maybe one, two, three, three or so little places and the, the dumpster was like right there. So he literally picked it up. 
he had that and some old broken lawn chairs that he also got from the dumpster. And all his company had to sell the lawn chairs, and he sat on that. And he had this little tiny, tiny, tiny TV. And I even told him, I was like, Mike, save up some money, get a decent TV, get some decent furniture, you know. But he would just blow his money. He would go to, um, what was that place? Dairy Queen. He would go to Dairy Queen. He would have to walk there. But he would call it in because I'd, I'd be there sometimes. And he'd be like, I'm just going to call Dairy Queen. I'm like, for what? Like, you're on food stamps. Why don't you just, like, use the money, you know, to buy food, you know, from the grocery store or whatever. And he just, he was just, he was blowing money. He was irresponsible. He was just, like, the epitome of a man that no one, no woman wants to be with. Did I think he was cute? Did I look like, did I think he looked like Garth Brooks? Yes, I did. But that was, that was it. Like, would I be be with him? I don't know. I was probably desperate at the time, but I don't think I don't think I could have dated him for long. He was straight. I remember he used to say, "For the right amount of money, you can have me." I'm like, "How much money are we talking about?" And he's like, "A million dollars." I'm like, "Really, really? Not twenty thousand or fifty thousand? Like, really?" So you mean to tell me that, like, if a man had offered you a hundred thousand dollars, you wouldn't date him? I don't have that kind of money, but like, you think you're all that to say where it has to be a million? First of all, I don't, even get, I don't even go there. That's dating. I'm not talking about intercourse. I'm just about dating. He's like, you can date me. We can be together. But it would be, have to be a million dollars. I'm like, a million dollars. I don't have a million dollars. I don't even have 5000 But you mean to tell me if I offered you like 50000 or $100,000, you wouldn't date me? He's like, no, it's not enough money. I'm like, but you know, he his at his height. His, he set his, I cannot believe this ice cream is not melted. A Hyundai Tiburon. And he got it. But like I said, you do bad stuff, it comes back on you. He treated that poor girl so badly. And uh, she was nice to me. That was another thing. Like, some time, time passed. And I guess she became friends with my friend, friend that he got pregnant um, she did have the baby, by the way. Um, and what's good is because he's on SSI, the government paid her. Like, she didn't have to fight. Like, you know, how, like, child support. Like, she didn't have to fight to get the child support. It's like, well, the guy don't work, so how can you get paid child support? When you're on SSI, it's different, I think, when you're on SSDI. But he was on SSI because he never worked. He has, like, mental problems. Like, he's bipolar. Like, he's mean. Um, so if you're an SSI, you can get a hundred girls pregnant. The government is going to pay child support and you know, they won't take your SSI check. So that was, at least she got that, you know what I'm saying? Um, but she became friends with that girl that got in the car. And I remember at least one time she had came down and her attitude changed. Like she was really, really nice to me. I guess because she figured, you know, that I told the truth, like, yeah, he's cute, but that's all he is, and he's going to treat you like crap, and he's going to, you know, he's, like, you don't want to be with this person. And Because I told her, I was like, do not buy him, do not buy him this car. Because I literally thought that they were test driving it. No, they, she literally bought it, made payments on it, but still, she bought it for him. So that's just one of a little story, and, um, yeah, that I shared. So, for more stories, you might want to subscribe, and, um... I'm going to take this in before it completely melts. It's starting to like melt along the sides. Until next time. By the way, if you stayed for this whole video, like tell me in the comments that I stayed for the whole video. Um, all right. I don't know what else to say. Um, besides, I've seen the law of attraction work. I don't, I knew you use it more for me because I, I kind of tend it because of my low self-esteem and self-hate, which unfortunately I have that. Um, I think I've used a lot of attraction against myself. And so, but you know, if, if I can help you, then, so it's like, don't do what I have done. Not necessarily, because I've also done good things for myself. But all I'm saying is, put me aside for a minute. If that helps you realize that the law of attraction is real, and that can help your life, then that's that's the point I'm making. That's, that's the, really the point of all this, is that if that can happen to that guy... I'm sure if I was watching this, you're a good person. You're not like him. 
and he got a brand new sports car. Okay? So, think about what you can get. So, but I will sell the law of attraction from what I've studied it, though. You got to feel it as if you already have it. Um, and I know I should practice what I preach, but again, I'm trying to help you. I should help myself, but I'm trying to help you. So in the law of attraction, it's like you have to say it and live it as if you already know it's going to happen. And better yet, it already has happened. As in live it, live it as if it already has happened. So like with him, I guess for him, and I don't think he studied the law of attraction. He wasn't too bright. Um, but he knew what he wanted. And he just knew, like, I'm going to get it. That's just it. You know, so I think I think he was using it without knowing what it is or... or, or researching it or whatever um so like and then he didn't hope for it because if you hope that something will happen then it will happen then it will happen and then uh, so it's not going to happen because you're giving out hope that it will that it will that it will and it will continue will 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 instead of it's already done you know what i'm saying like if i say one day i hope this will happen I just have to keep hoping that one day, well, one day, and it'll just go on and on for like infinity. I mean, he did say one day, but he was determined that it's going to happen. He's like, one day I'm just going to get and that's just that. You know, it wasn't like a desperate, like he wasn't desperate. Like, oh, I really need a car because I think if you give out from, from what I've studied, when you give out an energy of desperation, of need, then you'll always need something. Well, why need a car? If you're constantly needing it, you'll come... You see what I'm saying? Like, instead say, I know I already got it. And then you'll have it. Instead of saying, oh, one day I hope for this, and I hope for this, and I hope for this. That that feeling of hope is, I don't have. And then you're not going to have. Because you attract, supposedly, not just what you think and say, but what you feel. And he felt like, I'm going to get it. Um, I'm not saying to have an attitude like that. Like, I'm just going to get what I want. You know, don't be like that. But like... You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I talk, 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 talk. But yeah, I'll try to leave some more stories on how the law of attraction has helped me in the past. I went to the Bahamas because of the law of attraction. And some other places. Which really surprised and shocked me. That was just... A... Like I said, I have a binder that wrote down all the times... The law of attractions worked for me or for others. And I'll try to share that one day. <sighs> uh, below the video, I'll try to leave a link for this. This um, I'll try to find out where you can get the cheapest. So you can save some money. And then my Patreon is going to be on the bottom if you want to support this channel. And uh, until next time, enjoy your life. Enjoy the moment. You can save up your money and your health for a brighter future. And that's great, but don't forget to live in the moment. That is what I'm working on. It's so hard, but I'm working on that. You know, it's like a doctor will tell you don't smoke, but he'll smoke. Sometimes we have to listen to the hypocrites. I know that sounds crazy, but it's like if someone tells you not to smoke, but they smoke, it's because they know how hard it is to quit and they don't want you to be in that same boat that they're in. And so if I tell you to do something or take my advice and I'm not doing it, it's because I can't because it's too hard. But it, obviously you need to because it's important. You know what I'm saying? So um, like if someone tells you don't do drugs but they're still doing drugs, why aren't they quitting? Because it's obviously hard to quit and they don't want you to go down the same path they do. So sometimes it's... Hypocrites are... Yeah, you know... Um, not to, I, don't know, I, I hate to say the word hypocrite, but you know what I'm saying. <sighs> Have an awesome day. I'm going to stop talking now. All right, bye-bye.